All right, guys, so what we're going to do is I want to show you frame-by-frame -frame animation doing a walk cycle to show you kind of the elements of animation. And we're going to make it a movie clip so that we can then take that movie clip and it's going to loop over and over and turn it into an actual animation. Before we do that, let me show you what I did in my existing movie. I have some scenes in a movie. And I want to open up the library and show you the bird flying. What I did is did a series of keyframes in here. Each keyframe is a different part of the animation cycle. And I inserted several frames in between. If you look at the keyframes, you can tell that these are actual um, shapes. So if I click on the keyframe, you'll see all those little white, or all the little dots. That's indicating that it's a shape. So I have to take a picture, I'm going to convert it into a shape, and then I'm going to use the animation cycle to do that. Now, I can't take credit for this particular bird. This is just for demonstration's sake. If I wanted to do my own animation, probably the best thing to do would be to use this layer as a frame of reference and either hand draw my own bird or get, a, get pictures of actual birds to do this. But at least it shows you how to work it. So once you have a movie clip, and you can see it's a movie clip where it says bird flying. You see the little gear kind of thing in that symbol. If we go back to our scene, you will note I just put a standard motion tween there. In fact, I'm going to start it on the left. I'm going to drag this out, move it to the right. I'll hold down Control and type Enter, and you can now see here. Let me get this down here where you can see it and now you can see there's the animation cycle of course you're probably not going to want to have it fly straight so you might want to do something like this make sure that on the first keyframe you would want it rotated a little bit and you would want to on the animation you want to want to make sure you check orient to path it's on the first keyframe now as we move it, it kind of goes like this on the arc. That's scene four. I also have scene one. It does basically the same thing. Only because I added the little keyframes in between, you can see all the animation. Control Enter. And it's kind of slow, but you can see. Oh, it's, it's slow because I reduced the rate, the frames per second. I'm going to put it back to 24. And now control enter, and this is going to be more full speed. It's pretty fast. That first one was a little fast, so I'd probably want to change that. Make it go a little further. Etc. Okay, so let's do this on a new one, and I'll show you how I created that movie clip. So we're going to create a new flash file. So the first thing on your movie, you want to insert a new symbol. And I'm going to go ahead and insert my symbol before I've even grabbed an image. We'll put man walking side view. So I went ahead and created my symbol right away. Now there's nothing in here, but I have this little registration point that helps me identify where to put my picture. So now I'm going to go get a picture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make actually two movie clip symbols using this picture. And I think I'd like to start with the one I said I'd do for side view, so I'm going to start with that picture. So what I want to do is import this into, actually I'm not even going to import, I'm just going to copy it right here. And I'm going to paste it in here. Uh, it's not letting me. Then I guess I have to import it. I get the file name and then I import it. Okay, so I'm going to choose file import import to library frame small this is the one double click it and now it's in my library right here so I want to take it drag it out and there's my picture now there's a couple things we need to do at this point I can't really edit this I'm gonna have to turn this into a shape to edit it and then I'm only gonna use the top layer I'm gonna put the line of that picture right about where that little plus sign is and I'm going to move it over to the right. 
I think I'll center it right under the body. Next, this is a bitmap graphic, so I'm going to trace it and turn it into a symbol. So that's modify bitmap, trace bitmap. Color threshold 50, minimum area 4, that might be good. I'm going to test it out. Click OK. See how everything's dots? That means it's a shape. However, we have a problem because we have to be able to find where the white is around the character. We want to delete it, but we want to keep the white that's on the inside there. So what we're going to do is we're going to clean this all up and get it all ready. But before I do, I want to change the background of my stage because I need to see it. So I'm going to pick a blue background. I'm going to go back to my library, double click on man walking side view. Now I can see all the white. I want to get rid of all that white. I don't want that there. So I click on here, hit delete. And then I'm going to just draw a box around all the bottom ones, delete those. Then I'm going to get rid of this white, all of there, and then I want to delete the road or that line. And you got to be careful on that. Maybe the eraser is the better tool. Next, I think with this particular picture, I probably want to reinforce the legs and arms, make them stand out a little bit more, so I will proceed to do that. So I'm just going to go in here, clean it up. Be very careful when you're doing this, guys. A lot of times there's little areas of white that you don't realize are there. So I'm going to zoom in to show you what I'm talking about. If you look here, right that section there, that's supposed to be see-through. Same with that. So you want to make sure you're cleaning up all of those areas too while you're at it. That's just his hand, although that section there probably could be deleted. And we're just looking for areas like that. And I think we got it. So now I'm going to delete the rest of the ground and I'm going to reinforce the arms. I recommend you use a paintbrush with a really thin layer. So I'm going to use the paintbrush and I'm going to choose the gray that I see. So I want to click on the color here and I want to click the darker of the gray. And on my paintbrush, I want to get the smallest size and test that out. I might make it a little thicker. There we go. So I'm going to go in and just kind of clean that up a little bit. Okay, so at this point, I've cleaned up my dude. He's almost ready to go. I've got all of my keyframes I'm going to use. The problem is I only want one picture per keyframe. And so what we're going to do is each picture from the left to the right will be in its own keyframe. So in this case, the best way to do this, guys, is to put, a key, put all your keyframes in now with all of the pictures. Then once all your keyframes are in, go in and delete the ones that don't belong in the keyframe. Okay, so we got to count how many pictures we've got here. So we got eight here. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I need eight keyframes. I'm going to put them every other keyframe. So I'm going to insert a keyframe. So that's two, four, and so on. Keyframes. Okay, so now I've got my eight keyframes in. I got to add one more thing, and that's one extra frame to the right of that last keyframe. And here's why. This will loop, so as soon as it gets to the last frame on the timeline, it will go right back to the first frame again. So we need to have that extra frame in there. So now the next step is um, the first keyframe will have the first guy, the next one, the next, and so on. So the first thing we want to do is in our first keyframe, we want to delete all characters except for the first. So I drag a box around all of them but the first and hit delete. Remember, we're putting that little plus sign right under the hip. Okay, so that's the first keyframe. So we go to the next keyframe. 
Now we want to delete the first guy. And we can go ahead and delete the others. And then we want to move this guy so his hip is right over. Now I'm going to try to move it directly left, not up or down. Go to the next keyframe. Key and now we're on the third character. So we delete the first two, delete the remaining ones, and then click this guy. And my recommendation is you hold down shift and you do your left arrow. Remember, the hip is going to stay right above that. So now we delete the first three and we go on and on throughout the rest of the animation. And we're on the last one. And if you do it correctly, then your walk cycle should work. He's going backwards. Okay. Remember what we did. So now at this point, we have our man walking. We can go back to our scene. We can drag the man walking out, and it's a movie clip, so we can make our motion tween. I'm going to make the motion tween go out a little bit further, and I'm going to move him across the stage. Actually, have him start before it goes on the stage. Hold down Control, type Enter, and test it out. This guy's walking pretty fast, so I might want to add an extra frame in between. So part of this is just going to be deciding what you want to do. Now, to insert extra frames in between your keyframes, you can right click and insert a frame. Or you can click in there or even on the first keyframe and type the F5 key. I like the F5 key because then it's a little quicker. So I'm just typing F5. Go back to scene one, control enter. Now he's moving too fast for the speed at which he's walking. So I just make this a longer motion tween. Put more time between. There we go. Now if we want to have some fun, you can click on the first keyframe. Click on properties. Change the rotation to orient to path. And then um, what I would do is... Take the outer part of this, go up about here, take my curve, and control enter. And now he starts walking up and around. So you could get him to try to do a full circle. And of course, this is going to be awkward as we go. Okay, so you can, you can manage that and test that out. But the key here is that you get your motion tween, or you get your movie clip symbol with an animation cycle, and then you just attach it as a motion tween.